Hello, everyone. This is Professor Hill. It's a short video for our class, Introduction to Ethics, Philosophy 2306, here at St. Philip's College. This is a short video for the Summer 1 version of the class, completely online. And this is week four of our five-week class. It's Monday, and oh my God, I told you this was going to happen. It's July. Uh, yeah, July 1st, uh, 2019. So look, here's the thing. We got to have a conversation about this class because, like I said, it's the beginning of week four. Um, and really, all it means is we've only got two more of the discussion assignments left. We got one on Wednesday and one on Sunday. That's the end of week four. And then all we have left for week five is the final exam. Um, so, good news. Uh, with the two discussions that we have left, um, the one is involving the case of Baha Musa. That's the one that's due Wednesday night. And here's the thing about that, which is, again, it's an ethics case study, but it involves IHL. The necessary information about international humanitarian law, IHL, is in the modules. And then you'll see that there's, from there, links to other outside sources. Uh, so the point is that we want to learn something about IHL, but then apply it because it's an interesting example of, of ethics, in this case, military ethics. And look, there's all different kinds of ethics. We've seen medical ethics. Now we're switching to uh, military ethics. We're going to circle back the last thing, which is due Sunday night, the case of Cassandra C. That's back to medical ethics. That's where we'll end up. Uh, but this one, the first one, Wednesday night, Baha Musa, Discussion 6, that's the one where um, I want you to take a look at the story and what happened and try to think your way through a judgment about what you think he did, whether it was right or wrong, because he's put into a terrible situation. There's no doubt about that. He's young. He's new to the medical profession. He's under horrendous situation. Uh, but again, this is the thing about where do we draw lines? Are there some absolute you know, lines you shouldn't cross? How do you adjust when the situation and pressure around you is telling you to do one thing and you don't think it's right? So there's a lot to unpack in this particular situation. So spend some time with the case study but also with the IGL materials. We already introduced those last week um, when we were doing our case about the young 13-year-old vet. I wanted to just kind of make sure that people got a sense of what we were talking about in terms of military ethics, how IHL applies, what it is, the rules around armed conflict, the things you can and can't do even in war. And so, uh, and to get us thinking about the basis of that, What's the source of authority behind that? And again, I wanted to be clear about that term because, you know, when we think about the source of authority behind a set of ethics or behind a set of laws, uh, it's easy when we're, you're talking about like the government. You're talking about, you know, a set of laws that the state of Texas or the federal government says you can't do. Well, the authority behind these individual rules or regulations or laws is that government. We give it legitimacy. We obey the authority of that source because we've opted into that system. We agree that this is going to be um, a source of authority of rules and regulations that we're going to respect. And that's true not just for the government, but for all kinds of things. Um, Religion is a good example. I've mentioned that before. But also the military ethics, the military laws are kind of their own separate set of laws. There's military courts and tribunals and military lawyers. They've got their own code of military justice. Um, and, uh, and in addition to, for example, the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, that applies to American soldiers, there's also this international set of laws, IHL, that applies to everybody, to all the combatants inside an armed conflict. They are subject to this set of rules, IHL. And so um, we want to apply that to the case studies that we're looking at. 
And again, like I said, we're we're close. It's July. This whole thing is over next Wednesday. So, uh, so it's time to knuckle down. And there's three groups that I want to talk to. Two big groups and then one little group. The first big group is the people that have been doing really well. Um, my advice to you is if you've been knocking it out of the park so far, hang in there. Don't take your foot off the gas. You don't want to run the whole length of the field and then, you know, fumble on the one yard line. That happens. So hang in there. You're almost done. Keep doing what you're doing. Read, do the case studies, comment on your classmates. You're the group that's been doing it right so far. So uh, I'm just saying, hang in there. You're close. Uh, the next group is the group that has struggled a bit. And again, I understand people have had some conflicts. We've had to try to work through some problems. And look, we've had people who've been in and out of that hospital. We've had people that have struggled with all kinds of stuff. My point is, there's still time for you to pick it up, finish strong, and do well in the class. So don't give up hope if you've been struggling along, making it with your head above water. There's still time. You've got two big discussions in the final. That's plenty to show a good curve at the end, finish strong, and do well. So my encouragement to you is you can do it. Hang in there. So finish strong. The last group is the people who I have had to, it's, again, it's just a few people. I've had, I've struggled with it because they haven't followed the rules. And I finally just had to come down on some people and, um, uh, and all I can say is they're I'm clearly not watching these videos because in the videos, the special warnings I've sent out, I've said to people, please follow the directions. And there's some people who've been trying to skirt the directions. And uh, it never made any sense to me because, guys, every single keystroke has got a timestamp on it. It just is bonkers to me. So anyway, I guess part of ethics is, you know, People have done wrong stuff. They've been caught and punished. That's a shame. Um, but my point is, that's a very small subgroup. Most of the people are either doing really well and are being very consistent, um, or they're close, and if they just focus and finish strong, guys, it's only 10 days and we're done. You can turn it around and make it happen. So... Um, my advice at the end of today is just um, keep doing what you're doing if you're doing well. <laughs> and if you need a last minute push to get over the top, you can do that too. Hang in there. All right. As always, contact me if you need help. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.